Hello. Welcome to my other side of my room. I think I finally figured out how to track blurry footage. And you might be asking yourself, why is that an important thing to know how to do? Well, sometimes you run into a situation like this, where you're trying to put greenery in the background, but the background is so blurry that no tracking point can stick to it. In this situation, I only was able to track one tracking point, so I got a single point track. Everywhere else I tried to track was slipping all over the place. So that is a crazy problem to run into, and this is a potential solution. It's kind of a weird little idea that I had a long time ago. And basically you just use one of these little things. This is a cold shoe adapter to a quarter 20 mount. And basically, basically, basically you just put like two cameras together. So this guy is kind of tricky because you gotta line it upright, facing forward and backward. So it's very fiddly, but I think we just, I think, I think we got it. Ah, yes, very good. You want to be really careful with this. It will super easily get loose. I just have to tighten up the lower one. I think we got it. This is possibly the most convoluted setup I've ever dreamed up. The actual camera we're using, that's going to be out of focus. Then the witness camera here, more or less pointed in the same direction, so that's good. Get this good footage. Get this witness footage. Then in Blender, we have the tracked camera here. Let's duplicate the camera move it down, and then that's the tracked footage of the footage that's actually out of focus that we want. So, let's see if we can pull this off. The bottom camera, the background is completely obliterated, and the top camera, we've actually got some decent points to track. It's a little bit wider, so I think there's a lot more opportunities there to actually track it. Tap this. One of those should be good enough to sync up. Another cool thing that I just figured out. The bottom camera can be focused near, so right now it's focused on the phone. Top camera can actually be focused on the background. So if I wanted to track something into this shot, I can use this shot with the background in focus and the same camera motion, and then just apply that. So we've got a couple of clips and I've synchronized them here, but let me first show you actually how to synchronize them. So you can see here, I've got a video sequence editor opened and I've just imported both of the clips. I've turned on waveform display and you can see, I pretty much just matched it up visually using the audio track and you can listen to that, make sure there's no weird echoes or delays and then you can be reasonably sure that they're synchronized. So I put in a couple of markers here just to see really clearly what the difference is. The less blurry witness footage starts on 22 and then the more blurry actual footage that we were going to be using starts on frame 52. So there's a 30 frame difference of when I started one camera and then started the other camera. Unfortunately this is something you just kind of have to figure out and eh, it's not too bad to figure it out. Now I've got two movie clip editors open in this new blender scene and I've imported each movie clip here. We've got the blurry one and the witness one. To make sure that these are actually synchronized <laughs> you can't actually, if you play in one tab or the other, they won't play at the same time. So if you play down on the timeline, then they'll play at the same time. But anyways, to make sure that they're actually synchronized, I've got my end tab opened over on this side. And if we go down to the footage settings, you can see start frame I've set to 30 since this one has started later than this one. Cool. So I've already worked a bit on this Blender file and I've actually tracked the witness footage here. If we full screen here, you can see, yeah, we've got all the nice tracking points and you can kind of see there's lots of good layers to this scene. So that's pretty cool. Now, if I just go over some general settings for the solve, I've set the keyframe A and B. That's just when there's lots of parallax. So this is keyframe A, that changes a lot. And then this is keyframe B. So Blender can start to get an idea of the perspective. And I've also automatically solved the optical center and the radial distortion. Figuring out the distortion will help us with that track quite a bit. And over on the track settings for the camera, I just made sure to fill in that it's using a micro four thirds camera with the sensor width of 17.3. And I'm using a 25 millimeter lens on the top camera. 
So with this information, Blender got a pretty decent track of 0.06 pixels, but that's just for this footage. How do we translate that to this footage? Well, something that helped me quite a bit was that the phone was in both tracks and it wasn't moving. So you won't always be able to do this, but it helped me a lot in this situation because I knew this was where the phone was and these were these particular points on the phone. So when I went into the 3D viewport and I took my camera and added a camera solver constraint, I basically duplicated that, removed the camera solver constraint, and I've got the copy attributes add-on enabled. So you can select one camera, select the other camera, go control C, and copy the location and copy the rotation. And then this extra camera we've got here, I just went G and then double tapped Y and then moved it down and then parented it to the camera that was moving. And you can see that's what this camera here is. It's got a few different settings and you can see the position of it is a little bit offset as well. This was something I figured out just by kind of eyeballing it. So if we go into the camera and we set up background images, we've got that set to the right movie clip and the bottom one is set to the proper movie clip. I believe this is coming from the movie clip editor, this information. So we've got the offset working already. If we go up to this and unhide this little uh, plane here, I'm kind of using as a stand-in for the cell phone screen. And so if we go up to the top camera, We've got those tracking points, which, by the way, I should mention, you're probably not going to be able to see tracking points unless you go motion tracking here. And so now we can see the tracking points in 3D space, so that's pretty helpful. But yeah, these three tracking points were on the phone, and so I lined up the plane to kind of be in line with those three points. And then it's like, okay, this... This is pretty much the, the phone screen here. And so to figure out the offset of the bottom camera, I just kind of lined up the plane with the phone screen, which you can see at the moment really doesn't look great. And especially if we play it back, you can see it's kind of dancing all over the place. It's close though. Yeah, it's kind of weird, isn't it? But the, uh, the background should be a lot more consistent. So the farther away it gets from the camera, I believe the more consistent it will be. So if we take these tracking points, yeah, they're sticking pretty well to the background. Now a few more quick settings. With the bottom camera, I'm using a completely different lens than the top camera. So we need to account for that. As you can see, this one's a little bit longer in the camera settings. I've set the focal length to 41 millimeters, which is accurate to the bottom camera. Under the camera settings, Yep, we have it set to micro four thirds, so that's 17.3. A few other changes I've made is actually under depth of field. So I knew I was pretty much focused on the camera. I wasn't changing the focus at all. So I've got depth of field checked. And I've set a focus distance, which if you can't see this focus distance, if you go to viewport display and check limits, that shows the focus distance of the camera. And you can actually just grab this and kind of place it on the phone screen here. And then as it moves around, I was kind of jostling back and forth and missing focus a little bit. I think I actually ended up starting a little bit out of focus and then ending a little bit more in focus. So that seems a little bit more accurate there. And the other thing with the depth of field is I just turned the f-stop value way down. Now, we get something really sweet. If we select our tracking camera, I'm just gonna go Control and zero to make it the active camera. I've got this tracking marker selected way out here on the desk kind of thing in the background. And let's say we wanna put a monkey in the background behind the phone screen. If we just go mesh, add monkey, then make the bottom one the active camera again, Control zero on the number pad. This monkey's in the background here and we want to get it. <laughs> hey, look at that, yeah. We've got a 3D camera track, and it's of this ridiculously blurry footage. There's no way we could have got a decent camera track with this footage only. So that's pretty cool. Another cool thing is with the top camera, we have a pretty decent view of what's behind the phone, and it's all in focus, so that's really nice. Something I did was I just kind of recreated a lot of the background with super rough geometry, just kind of going off the tracking points I had. 
So this point is here, and I know the plane that I tracked is here, and that's kind of the rough angle. Then there's these kind of support rafters. There's some of that chair, some of that desk in the background. But anyways, if we go into camera view, we can see, yeah, this is matched up pretty nicely. And something that actually helped me to match that up properly was actually having in the background images of this camera, making sure that render undistorted was checked, because without that, you can see some of these lines should be straight lines, and without that checked, the lens distortion really kind of messes that up. And so rendering undistorted, we can get a lot cleaner with that, which is super nice. And the fun thing is we can take frame grabs from this movie clip and project it onto the geometry. So that's what I've done here. Pretty, pretty rough if you're not inside the camera view, but from the camera view, yeah, that's tracking and sticking onto there pretty nicely. Of course, I probably could have done a better job with some things. Now, if we go to the lower camera, we've got all of this background geometry that if we needed to remove something from the phone and we wanted the background to shine through, we could do that pretty well. So yeah, it's not a perfect solution. As I mentioned, if I unfide the phone screen, this thing is not locked off. It's going all over the place. So it's not a perfect one-to-one -one track. And a possible reason for that is each camera actually has internal image stabilization. So the sensor inside the camera is actually jostling around a little bit on purpose to lessen the motion of me awkwardly moving the cameras around. So it's less jittery and less shaky, which is cool if you just have one video. But if you've got two videos and you're trying to line them up and each sensor is moving independently of the other one, I could see why that might actually introduce some differences in between these two tracks. And the other thing, that is a huge discrepancy as once again I just kind of eyeballed the offset here and I think a better way to do that and figure out more scientifically what this offset is would be to track both of the cameras set up the bottom camera so it's not blurry and I could get a good solve from that and then kind of match up common points that I track in each camera and the cameras should kind of end up in the same place with the same motion and I should get a better idea of the actual offset in that case and once you have an idea of the offset you can apply that to other scenes and other tracks, assuming that you don't <laughs> change up your camera rig and mess that up. So yeah, that could be a better way to do that in the future. Okay, cool. If you found this video useful, you might be interested in this seamless looping smoke acid pack. I find these help me to add a lot of life to scenes in a very quick fashion. So if you want to get your hands on these, there's a link in the description where you can grab those for free. I hope you have an excellent day. Cheers.